What's up, what's up, you guys? I've got something real interesting that I ran across on the internet. And I think a lot of you might be uh, curious about. I've got a hold of a website that has the last 16 emails that Satoshi Nakamoto, the inventor of Bitcoin, sent to his uh, work associate, Mike Hearn. Now, I'm not going to go into who Mike Hearn is. You go all do your research on that. But I will include a link where you can find the last 16 emails from Satoshi Nakamoto. And after that, you know, he was never that person was never heard from again. So I'm not going to make I'm not going to go through all the uh, email because a lot of them are technical. But if you can look on the screen right now. I just want to point something out that I saw in the emails. Here's the last email right here at the bottom. So when you go to the site that I put in the link, <coughs> this is the last one, Saturday, April the 23rd, 2011. The last email, it says, reference holding coins in the unspendable state for a rolling time window. I had a few other things on my mind. This is uh, Satoshi talking. I had a few other things on my mind, as always. One is, are you planning on rejoining the community at some point? He's talking, you know, right there to Ken. And he's asking him that. Or is your plan to permanently step back from the limelight? I move. And then Satoshi is saying, I've moved on to other things. It's in good hands with Gavin and everyone. I do hope your Bitcoin J continues to be developed in an alternative client. It gives Java Dell something to work on and it's easier with a simpler foundation that doesn't have to do with everything. I'll get critical mass when impatient new users can get started using it while the other one is still downloading the blockchain. So that was his last email. But I just wanted to point something out. Y'all, you guys can just click on the link and you can read all these other emails. But check this out. The first one. This is what really. Is it? Yep. This this is the one that really caught my eye. The, the, this, the, the, the first of the 16 emails. I'm going to get to it. The, 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 the thing is at the bottom, but I'm going to read through it. This was April the 12th. 2009 to Mike Hearn from Satoshi Nakamoto questions about Bitcoin he said hi Mike I'm glad to answer any questions you have if I get time I'm out to write a FAQ to supplement the paper there is only one global chain the existing Visa credit card network processes about 15 million internet purchases per day worldwide Bitcoin can already scale much larger, larger than that with existing hardware from a fraction of the cost. It never really hits a scale ceiling. If you're interested, I can go over the ways it will cope with extreme size. By Moore's law, we can expect hardware speed to be 10 times faster in 5 years and 100 times faster in 10 years. And remember, that was in two, this, is, this is in 2009. He's speaking of the future. Even if Bitcoin grows at crazy adoption rates, I think computer speeds will stay ahead of the number of transactions. I don't un I don't anticipate that fees will be needed anytime soon. But if it comes to um, burdensome, if it if it becomes too burdensome to run a node, it is possible to run a node that only processes transactions that include a transaction fee. The owner of the node would decide the minimum fee they'll accept. Right now, such a node would get nothing because nobody includes a fee. But if enough nodes did that, then users would get faster acceptance if they include a fee or slower if they don't. The fee the market will sell on should be minimal. If a node requires a higher fee, that node would be passing up all, all, will be passing up all transactions with lower fees. It could do more volume and probably make more money by processing as many paying transactions as it, as it can. The transaction is not controlled by some human in charge of the system, though just individuals reacting on their own to market forces. Eventually, 
Most nodes may be run by specialists with multiple GPU cards. For now, it's nice that anyone with a PC can play without worrying about what video card they have, and hopefully it'll stay that way for a while. More computers are shipping with fairly decent uh, GPUs these days, so maybe later we'll transition to that. A key a key aspect of Bitcoin is that the security of the network grows as the size of the network and the amount of value that needs to be protected grows. The downside is that it's vulnerable at the beginning when it's small, although the value that can be stolen should always be smaller than the amount of effort required to steal it. If someone has other motives to prove a point, they'll just be proving a point I already concede. My choice for the number of coins and distribution schedule was an educated guess. It was a difficult choice because once the network is going, it's locked and then we're stuck with it. I wanted to pick something that would make prices similar to existing currencies, but without knowing the future. That's very hard. I ended up picking something in the middle. If Bitcoin remains a small niche, it'll be worth less per unit than existing currencies. If you imagine it being used for some fraction of world commerce, then there's only going to be 21 million coins for the whole world. So it would be worth much more per unit. Values are 64-bit integers with eight decimal places, so one coin is represented internally. Basically, what we what we call today as satoshis. There's plenty of granularity. If typical prices become small, for example, if 0.001 is worth one euro, then it might be easier to change where the decimal point is displayed. So if you had one Bitcoin, is now displayed as 1,000, and 0.001 is displayed as one. Now, here's the part that I found very interesting at the end of this letter. Satoshi Nakamoto says Ripple, right here, this is from the, the, the inventor of Bitcoin. The inventor of Bitcoin said Ripple is interesting in that it's the only other system that does something with trust besides concentrate it into a central server. Satoshi. Yes, sir. Ripple. Y'all heard you right. This is right from the inventor of Bitcoin. And this was back in 2009. Satoshi Nakamoto said Ripple is interesting in that it's the only other system that does something with trust besides concentrate it into a central server. Satoshi Nakamoto. That's right, you guys. The link to this will be in the description of this video. I'm, like always, I always try to get you some information you might not know about, you might not be able to find, but Satoshi likes Ripple, which means Satoshi likes XRP. Ooh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is a guru. See you on the next one. Thank you.